I just found out this uh, toilet slash sink repair tool. It's actually pretty good as a soup. Third time's a charm. Fuck. I heard you guys want a speed control on your Walkman, and I promised on Twitter I'd make a tutorial. So that's what I'm gonna do now. What we're gonna need, cassette player, obviously. Preferably one that can record, and a PWM dimmer. That's what we're gonna control the speed of the actual uh, motor inside the cassette player. So it goes without saying, I didn't invent this way of doing it. Um, this is a long used way to control motors and a little bit better than just putting a potentiometer and a jumper. Most of the time, depending on the machine, you could get it back to normal speed so you could use the cassette player as normal when you use this method. And it's supposed to be better for the motor in general. Also, because we're adding a component that won't fit in a Walkman sized cassette plastic encasing, you're gonna need a project box of some sort. It doesn't really matter. Super basic, reduced way of explaining what we're gonna do is limit the amount of voltage going to the motor. And this little device turns on and off really fast and makes pulses, kind of a square wave, if you will. And that dictates how fast the motor spins. I bought a case of three. You could get these on Amazon for like $9 Canadian, um, even cheaper for the American folks out there. And you could theoretically put it on most motors. It tells you the rating. Let's look at what we're gonna work on. Pretty accurate drawing if I do say so myself. So this is the Byron Statix cassette recorder player. It's super shitty and I guarantee this will break soon. Um, so I already have some motors to use this when it does break. I didn't introduce myself before. I'm Art the Boy, or at least that's my music alias. And I'm getting into Plunder Phonics, Vaporwave, ambient type stuff right now. And tape loops and playback manipulation is a really great untapped sampling method that I feel like more people would enjoy. Really shitty equipment like this isn't well suited for its intended purpose, but you could turn it into an instrument, and I think that's really cool. I'm gonna take this out. So I find these are really easy to pop open when you run your nail under this model right here. And here's the inside. This guy right here, the silver circular uh, prism is our motor. This guy right here, the speaker input. So we're just gonna cut these wires extend them, put the jacks on. I don't normally solder near the PCB because look at all these small, tiny components that will easily break if we put a soldering iron too close to it. So I just get some spare wire and just extend those guys and that's normally the best way to do it. This is the wire that leads to the actual motor. So we're gonna cut this and in between it, we're gonna add our trusty PWM dimmer. And then we're just gonna simply glue it to the side of the box and we're good. Also helpful is finding a cassette player that could run on something other than batteries because we could run the wires or the extended wires outside because we always have this extra battery space that we don't really have to use. So what I'm doing right now is the hardest part. The wires are so tiny, I'm stripping them. And I don't have good wire strippers, I'm literally using scissors. Hopefully you're doing this with a battery operated device so you don't shock yourself. Wire stripping, there, I kind of felt a thing. And there you go, exposed wire and make sure you don't rip out any of the copper wiring because it increases resistance when you do that and that's never good. I just have to do the positive lead now and this guy 
and hopefully you guys get the idea. So let's go forward into the future with video editing magic. It is all ready to be extended. I have a bunch of wires in this little bag and um, yeah, let's get going. Advice I'd give you is buy one of these things, little alligator clip guys. It makes everything so much easier. Also buy good solder and flux. This is everything extended. What's left to do now is insulate the connections with electrical tape. Every single one of them shouldn't be that hard. Um, right here is the output, the input, and then the four leads that lead to and from the motor that we're going to put this in between and just screw them in at these solderless joints right here. Little change of plans. So that little project box I was putting together doesn't really accommodate all the parts I needed to. So I found this particle board little chest thing and I'm going to place the two tape players kind of like this, have the jacks running out on the sides. You're gonna have to chisel them down, the sides I mean, because they're this thick and obviously a guitar jack can only really go through something that's like, I don't know, less than a millimeter thick. So plug it in, naturally nothing works. Um, well, it powers on, but the motor doesn't spin. So I'm like, I, what's going on? Obviously, I think it's this. Um, so I try the other three, no dice. Um, and then I'm just like, all right, I gotta actually test before I return these. So I plug it into a nine volt battery, which is how I use all my other motors. And sure enough, it works. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's the motor, maybe the motor has um, something weird with it, or maybe it's not powerful enough or something, and I'm like, that's probably it. So I disassemble the entire thing. Literally one screw holds this uh, PCB board down, it lifts off, and then three screws, and then this whole entire, literally, the whole cassette mechanism comes out. It's a very simple design, actually, but that's not why you're here. So, I get some alligator clips, put it in here, put a 9 volt, awesome. And then I do the same thing after it's all assembled again and it works. So what does this mean? This is completely doable and it's going to work, but besides the actual power supply itself, there's going to be need for a 9 volt battery, or at least a 9 volt AC adapter. Hopefully, um, I could come up with some way to fandangle that. But for now, I'm just gonna use a nine volt battery because guitar pedals in general require them anyway, so it's not gonna be a big deal. It's alive, finally. Good thing I get a couple in my office. a huge value village bag of cassettes. I want to pick one that isn't going to give me a copyright strike. 
So I removed the cassette doors. That's not required, obviously. Um, I did so because, first of all, I, I like looking at the actual tape. And to do the other mods I was doing that aren't a part of this tutorial, um, it was kind of necessary. This is like normal speed. I should mark where it is, but yeah, like I'm never going to play my actual cassettes on here. So as you can hear, it gets pretty slow. It gets even slower than that. Care, it goes really fucking fast too. For those of you wondering what the heck this left part is, basically it's another duplicate of the tape machine. All I did was cut the head out, added an input, and um, put that head in this little tape loop thing, as you can see. So I can make this tape delay, um, like null project, I believe the YouTube channel was called. Anyway. I'll demo this in an actual song or uh, track or whatever, but yeah, you have this kind of right deck, which is just your typical very speed cassette player. Uh, because these are two separate decks, you also have the volume um, rotary potentiometer on both of them, so you can make the delay louder or the original uh, deck louder too. So this is just the original. And then I'm going to bring the other one in. So there's one issue about this design, and it goes without saying, whenever you're messing with these sort of electronics, you're always going to have some sort of electrical interference. All of these wires are exposed, and this tape head is exposed to like all these electronics inside here. I mean, for some reason, this one's nice and quiet, but this one isn't. And I think it's just because of all these extra antennae that I'm basically adding on to the whole circuit. So what I did was I ended up grounding the actual head with just a common ground point, just a random one that I picked. It seemed to put the electrical interference a lot down. Um, but when I'm using this, chances are I'm going to have access to uh, EQ, whether it's on an amp or uh, like a tone control of some sort. Um, a really good idea uh, would be to add I ran out of jacks I couldn't add an output for the delay so in the future I'll just add another quarter inch jack and maybe wire just a regular tone pot to it um, figure out how to do that and um, just make a low pass filter um, which most of the time you'll have anyway so you could just cut that electrical interference out and there's not much high inf information anyway so it won't be a big deal but hope you enjoyed this Weird tutorial. My name's Art the Boy. Um, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, give my music a listen, especially my newer stuff. It's going to be a lot more um, physical sampling, like tape stuff, weird Heinbach y uh, amulet style type plunder phonics. So if you're into that, um, give me a shout. Okay. Be good, everybody. Thank you.